had several requests to make some Minecraft blocks, so I thought we would start with the iconic Minecraft dirt block. This is a very fun, very easy scrap project, and it only consists of six pieces. So you should be able to make yourself up a pile of them in no time, <laughs> especially if you've got Minecraft fans on your gift giving list this year. So without further ado, let's hop on over to the craft table and start digging up some dirt. <laughs> In order to make our Minecraft dirt blocks, I'm using acrylic worsted weight yarn in bright green and a nice earthy brown. And you don't need very much of either, this is totally a scrap project, but try to make sure both of your yarns are roughly the same size. I'm using a 4.25 millimeter hook, it's my favorite. It's a G6 and I like this hook especially with this size yarn because it makes small stitches so none of your stuffing should show through. You need stuffing. I'm using homemade stuffing. I've chopped up an old pair of jogging pants today. <laughs> you need a pair of scissors and a yarn needle, and once you've got all that, we can get going. <laughs> Cubes are six-sided structures, so we need to make six individual pieces in order to make our dirt block. So the first thing we're going to do is make the top and the bottom. They're both identical except that one is in green and one is in brown. We're going to start with a slip knot. Make sure it's not too tight or too loose. And to begin, we're going to chain nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So you want a chained length of nine. We're going to skip the first stitch or the first chain uh, from the hook because this is going to be our turning chain and we're going to work in single crochet. In fact, this entire project is done using a single crochet or a variation on the single crochet stitch. So into that second chain from the hook, we're going to single crochet. You're going to single crochet in each chain all the way back to the beginning and at the end of row one you will have eight stitches. Eight is the magic number here. You are going to create two pieces that are eight stitches wide and eight rows high. So your first row will be eight stitches long and every row after that will be eight stitches long as well. And the best way to ensure that you've got eight stitches at the end of every row is to count. So hold your work and count. I usually start at the first stitch from the hook. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That's my eighth one, or my last stitch there. At the end of every row, chain one. You need a turning chain, and then you turn your work. That turning chain brings you up to the right height. You single crochet in the first stitch, and in each stitch, all the way back across. When you get to the end of row two, count your stitches. <laughs> count your stitches at the end of every row, and make sure that you still have eight stitches in each row. You're going to single crochet back and forth, back and forth, for eight rows in total. And when I've gotten to my eighth row, I will count my rows so that you can see exactly what it should look like. All right, I have completed eight rows. Each row has eight stitches in it, and at the beginning of each row, I make sure I chain one for a turning chain. 
always double check, so I start with the stitch closest to my hook, not the loop on my hook, but the one closest to it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight stitches, and I have eight rows, and I'll show you how you can count them. You can see there's a nice dark sort of line every, there's three of them, you should be able to see those pretty clearly, my little fingers are behind them there. That is a natural indent after every second row. So there's the back of my first row, you can see sort of a, a little triangular looking thing. So there's this sort of the top part of the stitch and the two bottom or the two side pieces. Then there's the front side of the next stitch, so all those nice little neat V's, and then the back side, and then the front side, and then the back, and the front, and the back, and the front. You can count in two. So every time you see this sort of depression or this darker line, you know that marks two rows. So you can go two, four, six, and obviously eight. I've got eight rows. So that's a quick way to count. You want to have eight rows high by eight stitches wide. That is the top piece of your cube. I'm going to fasten off and leave a nice long, long tail because I'm going to use it to sew my top piece down on the rest of my cube when I have the rest of my cube finished. So I'm going to fish out a nice long piece there. Grab my scissors. And I'm going to pull it back through that last loop on my hook. Give it a nice tight tug. And that's that. That is the top piece for my cube. You want to make sure that you go ahead and make a second one exactly like the first in brown because that will be the bottom of our cubes and these have got to be identical. So you want to have a second square that's eight, inch, eight stitches long by eight rows high and the reason I did it in the green is because it's a lot easier for me to show you that using the green than the brown. But make another one exactly the same as the first in brown and then you're going to make the sides. You're going to make four of these. They're practically identical to the first thing we made, except while your top and bottom pieces are eight stitches wide by eight rows high, your side pieces, and you need four of them, are eight stitches wide, so you cast on the same number of chains and you single crochet back and forth for the same number of stitches. You want to have eight stitches wide, but they're one row less than the top and bottom pieces. So your side pieces are eight stitches wide by seven rows high. So you make four pieces that are eight stitches by seven rows high, and two pieces, one in brown, one in green, that are eight stitches wide by eight rows high. You can cast off the same way I did, you don't need very much um, tail, and then just weave in your ends because it's easier to have them out of your way. So once you've made all four of your side pieces that are eight stitches by seven rows high and your top and bottom pieces that are eight stitches by eight rows high, we'll assemble our cube. We're going to start by assembling the sides of our cube. So you're going to take your four side pieces which are eight stitches wide by seven rows high, all four of them, so all four exactly the same, you're going to take your yarn needle and you're going to thread up a nice long piece of dark brown yarn. Now you can sew these sides together in sets of two or you can do this funky little trick that I'm going to do. So grab your first two pieces and make sure you're holding them so that the tops and bottoms are facing up and down and put them together because we're going to go and sew across the side. So we're going to sew up one whole side of our two side pieces. You want to anchor your yarn in the bottom corner of one of your side pieces. So I'm just going to put that second side piece down for a second. And I'm going to anchor my yarn in the bottom corner. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just tie a knot. So I've come right through the bottom corner, as you can see. I'm just going to tie a little knot. So tie both sides together, just like that, and there I don't have to worry about it anymore. So I'll pick up my second piece and put it back 
along this back side of my first. So we're just going to sew these two sides together first. Take your yarn needle and we're sewing over using a whip stitch, so around and around and around over the front or the outside of our pieces. And the reason we sew across the outside of our pieces is because it gives it sort of a, a more of a boxy shape and it's a little frankly it's a lot easier <laughs> than trying to sew it together and then flip it inside out. So we're just going to sew the two pieces, actually all your pieces together on the outside. Um, and that part is really really simple. So you just pair up your two edges, make sure they're nice and even. Your yarn's coming out the top of the first one. Take your hook, or I should say your needle, go through the bottom corner, so from the back to the front of the second one, through the first and just start sewing. Try to pick up the edge pieces, so the edges of the little stitches of both sides and don't get too much of the stitch but don't get too little so that you end up with little holes. You want to create a nice closely stitched seam so that none of your stuffing wants to leak out. And you can take your time doing this. There's no rush here. But just make sure you're getting good pieces of the edge of each of the stitches on both sides all the way up and try to keep them even because you want to make sure that your two pieces align at the bottoms and the tops. So you don't want them sort of sitting crooked or you know, somehow like this when you get to the end. You want them to still be nice in, an, in alignment with each other. And then I like to put the last stitch underneath the top stitches of both sides. There. See? It already wants to sit at a 90 degree angle. <laughs> or as at least as 90 degrees as soft stuff can sit. But there's no real spaces showing through, so I'm not going to have any stuffing poking through my edges, and that's the most important thing. Once you've finished, I take my needle and I go back through to the back side of my new piece of fabric, and I'm going to attach the next side over here. So I'm going to flip this upside down, I'm going to take my needle, and I'm just going to pick up pieces of a couple of the stitches across the back, just like that. Pull my yarn through and then put it right through the top corner of my next edge. And I'm not going to pull tight because I don't I don't want this to happen, all right? So just lay that string across the very back top row and it just brings it out to where you need it to go next and that's why I like to cut a nice long thread up at the beginning and that saves me from doing tons of knots as I go. So I got my next side, make sure it's nice and even and paired up against my, my second or my first side and I just start all over again. I pick up through the first, the top corner of the first or the second piece there and I do the exact same thing down this side. So all you have to do is sew your side edges together doing this. Once you get to the bottom of this side, you can run your sewing thread along the bottom edge of your next side, bring it out at the bottom corner, pair up your fourth side, and then sew those two sides together. If that's kind of weird or you're afraid that you're going to pull it out of alignment, you can just individually sew each set of sides together. Um, but it's also helpful if you knot both ends and then weave them in at the end. Because you don't want any of your little edges coming apart. You don't want your seams sort of popping. <laughs> but take your time. Sew all of your side, si side seams together. And once you've got all four of your pieces sewn together, We'll sew up the final edge. Okay, I have now sewn all four of my side pieces together and I have got to finish the cube part now. So I'm going to take my last two edges, place them together the exact same way, 
and sew, sew through them both. So, and then we're going to make it look a bit more cube-like. <laughs> okay. And that is that. So there you go. There are four distinct sides. And you can really see it if I hold it like this. And it's going to look quite square, especially when we have it all stuffed. So I'm going to just leave whatever tail I have left there. I'm going to take my needle out for now. And I'm going to identify one side or the other to be my top or the part that I'm going to put my green sort of grassy uh, topper on. So I'm going to let the string that I where I stopped, that's going to be my bottom. And you can go ahead and sew the bottom on right now. So if you still have some string left, you can thread up your yarn needle again, or you can just sort of tie some more yarn on and we can sew on our bottom. This is really exactly the same way. You're just going to sew across each side all the way around and the best way to do that is to line up your edges as neatly as you can. So pick one corner and then the other and remember that each block is six stitches wide. So six, six, or sorry, eight stitches wide. <laughs> Each block is eight stitches wide, and it's the same for each of your side pieces. They're all eight stitches wide as well. So if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, as you sew, so you pick up the edge of your, say, piece of the side, and the first stitch across the top of your bottom piece, that's one. Then you move to the next set, And that's two. Next set, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I've gone ahead and I've sewn down the first side of my bottom piece with the first side piece. And I've gone through all eight stitches across both sides. So now I know that, that for sure that's not gonna go anywhere. And I turn a corner and I do the same thing. Now there are eight stitches across this side piece and there's eight rows across the sort of the height of my bottom piece. So eight and eight, so I'm still dealing with the same number. So I line up that raw edge as best I can with that other side piece, and I'm going to count eight again. I don't have eight neat stitches to use across this edge piece, kind of like when we were sewing together the raw edges of our side pieces, but I'm going to count still, and I'm going to make sure I put in eight even stitches across this edge of my bottom piece. And you're going to go ahead and do that all the way around the bottom piece until the whole thing is sewn to the bottom of your cube. So eight stitches through each set of sides all the way around. And um, if you put in a few extra, that's fine. You ultimately what you want is to make sure that none of your stuffing is gonna leak out and you've created a nice even looking cube. So go ahead, finish sewing the bottom onto your cube. And then we'll move on to the very exciting grassy part. <laughs> Alright, I've sewn down all four edges of my bottom across all four bottoms of my side pieces. So basically I'm constructing a cube here and I'm left with a little bit of string. I'm just going to tie an actual knot. So I want to make sure that I actually knot my string off, make that nice and tight. And then I'm just going to weave it in back and forth through some of the bottom stitches. I'm just one of the sides, doesn't matter. And I'll go back and forth a couple of times. And then, I think that's enough. I'll just poke it through a stitch, pull out the inside, and I'll trim off the rest. There. Okay. So there's our bottom and our sides done. 
Now I like to kind of stretch it into a bit of a cubic looking shape. There we go, starting to look even like a little bit of a box. <laughs> now, you might be thinking to yourself, the top and the bottom are both 8 by 8 and the sides so far are 8 by 7. So what are we going to do in order to make it look perfectly cube-like? Well, that's where this extra row comes in across the top of our almost finished cube. So before we sew on our top piece, we're just going to put that to the side, you're going to grab your green yarn again and your crochet hook. You're going to make a slip knot, grab your cube, Pick a side, any side, and attach your yarn, so you're attaching your bright green yarn, to one of the corners of the top of one of the sides of your cube. You can attach it with a single crochet, so you can pull up a loop. Make sure that you've got that slip knot on your hook, that counts as a stitch. Pull back through both, and you've attached with a single crochet. Now. How did I get this uneven looking edging? You know the tops of Minecraft blocks are kind of pixelated to look like the grass is sort of growing down the sides of it? Well we're going to use what is called a spike stitch. So it's technically a single crochet, it's just a little longer than a regular single crochet. So we single crocheted into the first stitch across the top of our first side, and now instead of using that second stitch, which you can see right there at my thumb, we're actually going to put our hook through the stitch below it. So one whole row down, put your hook through there, grab the yarn, and pull up a loop that's a bit taller than the first one you did, and then just finish the single crochet. And that creates a spike stitch. Then you're going to single crochet regularly into the next stitch, and then you're going to spike again. So skip that next stitch, put your hook through this bottom, so one row down of the next stitch, pull up a tall loop, wrap, and come back through, and you've spike stitched. See, now we've got a bit of an uneven looking edge going, I love this. Single crochet regular into the next stitch. There's the next stitch, but we're not going to use it, we're going to go through the bottom of that next stitch. So one row down, pull up a tall loop, single crochet, single crochet into the next stitch, and then we've got one stitch left. Remember it's only eight stitches across, so we've gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the last stitch is number eight. It's also a spike stitch, so don't use that one. Go down one row, Pull up a tall loop and single crochet. Voila! Top edge of side one complete. Now we're going to move on to the next side. This is optional. You can pick up the next stitch all the way across or you can work a little something into this this corner edge if you like. That's entirely up to you, um, but if you find that your stitches are kind of spaced apart, if you want to work an extra little single crochet into that um, seam where you've been sort of sewing, you can go ahead and do that if you feel your stitches are a little wide apart. Otherwise, look at your next um, side and make sure you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight obvious stitches across there. Pick the first one and do a regular single crochet. Then you're going to repeat the same pattern. So instead of single crocheting in the next stitch, you're going to go down a row and spike stitch instead. There we go. Single crochet regularly into the next stitch. And instead of single crocheting in the next stitch, go down a row and spike stitch. I love the spike stitch. I think it's such a cool, <laughs> it's such a cool stitch. I like how it looks like a really long single crochet or possibly even a fang. <laughs> We're going to single crochet into the next stitch, and there's the next one. We're going to skip it. We're going to go down, so you're going, we're working below it, and spike stitch. We've done one, two, three, four, five, six so far, 
So one more regular single crochet and one more spike stitch. And that finishes the second side of our dirt block. So each side starts with a regular single crochet and then a spike. Single, spike, single, spike, single, spike. And you'll have eight all the way across. Or four regular single crochets and four spike stitches on each side. So you can move on to your third and your fourth sides and do the same pattern. Single crochet, spike stitch, single crochet, spike stitch. For your next two sides, and once you're done, come on back and we'll fasten off. Okay, once you've gotten all the way around all four sides of your cube, and the pattern is regular single crochet, spike stitch, single crochet, spike stitch, single crochet, there'll be four regular single crochets and four spike stitches on each side. <laughs> once you get all the way around to the end, Identify that first single crochet and slip stitch into it. There you go. You can snip your yarn. Doesn't have to be much of a tail. You're just going to fasten off and you can stuff that tail down there, weave it in, or pick up the back side of one of your stitches and just pull it down through there. That just kind of keeps it out of your way. So the next thing you're going to do is one of two things. If you can stuff it and sew around the top comfortably, you can stuff your cube first. Otherwise, you can sew on the first three sides of your top part and then stuff it in that last little space before you close it up. But I'm going to stuff mine first and because I'm using sort of heavier stuffing, it's not really going to move anywhere. And then we're going to sew down the tops. So, stuffing. Once you're ready to sew on your top piece, thread up the long tail. And I like to lay my top piece on to make sure that it's going the same way as my bottom piece. So you see there's my rows going back and forth across my bottom. So, I want my top piece to do the same thing. So I'm going to take my cube, and if you find it's too difficult to sort of stuff it and keep the stuffing in while you sew down, like I said, sew down your first three edges first and then stuff it in that little hole that's left. But if you're using something that's relatively manageable like me, then you can just sort of keep your top part on it with a thumb and you can continue sewing and it's not too, too, too difficult. Same thing as we did on the bottom. We're gonna line up our edges. So because my yarn starts here, I'm going to sew this raw edge first, but I know that there's eight stitches across each edge and there's eight stitches across the top and bottom of my top piece and eight rows across both sides. So I should be able to get eight neat and tidy stitches out of each side. And that's the rule of thumb I'm going to follow. So I'm going to put in my first stitch that counts as one, and then I'm just going to count all the way down the side. So there's number two, and number three. And remember, you want to pick up pieces of your sides. Number four, five, six, there's another little piece, seven, and the last one for this side. So here's the last stitch across the side, and I'm going to just poke it through the bottom corner of my top piece, eight. And I'll just double check. Yep, it looks like it's down pretty good. Turn my corner, and it's the same thing across this side. So I want to get eight stitches across the bottom, or this sort of side matchup. So We'll go one, and you can use the same corner stitches twice if you like. If you find that is a little easier, then I recommend using both those stitches twice. But like I say, if you put in a few too many, that's fine. You just don't want your stuffing to come out. So 
it's easy if you think in terms of well, eight stitches per side, but if you put in a few more, that's fine. No one's going to notice, and it'll just make your toy that much stronger. So, no worries. This is just a good rule of thumb to follow. Eight stitches per side, or more. <laughs> Turn a corner, and you guys can finish sewing down the last two sides. Remember, if you've got to put your stuffing in yet, you can start putting some in now, and the more you add and then sort of sort of squish it into a shape and keep sort of sewing, you can stick in the last little bits at the end, and then we'll be almost finished our cubes. Okay, I finished sewing down all four of my sides. I'm just going to pick a little piece anywhere, somewhere, as long as it's green, and knot off my yarn. Make sure that's nice and tight. Good. Then I'm just going to weave it in randomly through a few of the stitches of one of the green rows. There we go, and that feels pretty tight. Then I'm just going to bury it somehow in the rest of my block. Try not to pull too tightly, and snip off the excess. There! All that's left is to kind of squeeze your corner edges and maybe the bottom ones, and squish it into a nice cubic looking shape. <laughs> and there! One dirt block. This one is stuffed with polyester fiberfill. This one is stuffed with regular recycled cotton jersey. And you can probably tell this one's a little on the fluffier side than this one. Plus, this one has a little more weight to it. But both are absolutely adorable, <laughs> in my opinion, and both totally look like a Minecraft dirt block with a little bit of grass on the top. <laughs> and there you have it! One iconic Minecraft dirt block, easily made out of the scraps you've got lying around. And like I said, it's only six sides, so you should be able to make up a whole pile of them in no time. If you're new to the show and you want more Minecraft, make sure you check out our Creeper headband tutorial, our Creeper, so our stuffed Creeper tutorial, and we also did the Enderman. And as an added bonus, the Enderman pattern is available for free on our website over at jadenstitches.com. So make sure you check that out, download a copy for yourself, and put it in your project journal. If you have Minecraft fans on your list this year, then we have got you covered. <laughs> That's it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in and for bringing us up to 30,000 subscribers. That is so absolutely awesome, and I want to thank you all so very much. You guys are wonderful, and we would not be having nearly as much fun around here without you guys tuning in every week. So thank you so much for that. We will see you again very, very soon on the Jaden Stitches Show. So until then, stay safe and happy Minecrafting. <laughs> Bye, everybody.